Hello, Don McRae here with Premier Police Training, and we're going to pick up the first installment of warrantless vehicle searches by starting with the basics of a valid consent search. As in every situation where you're dealing with the constitutional rights of a fellow citizen, rule number one, never violate those constitutional rights. You're going to perform a lawful search or lawful seizure every time. So what are the basics of a valid consent search? Well, first, the person granting you consent or you're seeking it from, well, that consent has to be knowing. In other words, you have to believe that that person has normal cognitive abilities. The second requirement for a valid uh, consent search is this. It has to be voluntary, right? It's none of this, uh, hey, I'll, uh, I won't write you a ticket if you let me search your vehicle. No, no, it just needs to be straight up voluntary. All right. The third requirement for a valid consent search is the person has to have the authority to grant you consent over the vehicle. And the fourth main requirement is a consent search can be stopped at any time. That's the citizen's right. If they tell you to stop a consent search, there's one thing you have to immediately do. And that's it. OK, you have to stop. Now, I want to talk about one more thing before we move on. It's the, some officers are in the practice of asking for consent to search a vehicle, even though they know they're going to search it anyway under another valid warrant exception. And that's what I want to talk about, is when that situation happens. Okay, so let's look at two scenarios. Because I really think this needs a closer look. Here's scenario number one. So you, you ask, sir, uh, may I have consent to search your vehicle? And the person you're seeking consent from says, no, I don't want you anywhere near my vehicle. And you respond with this. Well, I'm going to search it anyway. Here's what you're going to possibly create out there roadside. Urgh. And rightfully so. So before I go any further into talking about this issue, let's go to scenario number two. Let's say you got consent, now you're halfway through it. Even though you had another valid warrant exception, you asked for consent, you got it. Now halfway through that consent search, the driver tells you to stop searching. However, you continue searching and you tell them, oh, I don't have to. Can you see an issue with these two under these two scenarios? So before I move on, let me just pose this situation. If you do that with consent search for vehicles, do you do the same thing when you're going to search somebody incident to custodial arrest? They're under arrest, you handcuff them, and then you ask for consent to search them? Well, of course not. So the question is, why are you doing it with vehicles? Because uh, you may end up in a real, real bind out there by asking for consent, get being told no, and then saying, well, I'm gonna search it anyway. All right, just something to consider, All right? Something to consider, now we'll move on. So what constitutes valid consent? You ask them for consent and they say yes, or you ask them for consent and they say, I guess so, or I don't see why not. Well, what about that? Well, here's, here's the answer. If they say yes to your request for a consent search, that falls under an explicit consent. If you ask for consent and they, they respond, I guess so, or I don't see why not, that falls under implied consent. And just so you know, they're both valid. They're equally valid. Implied consent is just as valid as an explicit consent as long as it's knowing, voluntary, you see they have authority, so it's equally, equally uh, valid. Now here's one issue, you get consent and now you're gonna go in and start, let's say tearing some things apart in the car as far as pulling off uh, door panels, anything that's destructive, ah, be careful there. Because if you're gonna perform any anything destructive during your search to that vehicle under consent search, you need to know case law says you have to have explicit consent only. Implied consent doesn't fly in that situation. 
Okay, are we clear? So remember that. Now in this situation, let's say you were granted consent, now you're in, in the midst of your search, and now you find something illegal. Well, the consent search now automatically ends. The citizen does not have the, the right at this time to stop the search because it's going to transition from consent to what's called probable cause to search under the Carroll Doctrine. What I've got now is I got a couple of videos coming up uh, next. Uh, it'll be, I think, three videos that'll cover three different situations of consent searches. So if you're ready, let's watch some videos. Hello, sir. Deputy McRae with the Sheriff's Office. How are you today? I'm fine. Uh, just a couple questions for you. Uh, is this your vehicle? Do you own this vehicle? Yes. Okay. May I have consent, your consent, to search this vehicle? Okay, very good. I appreciate that. Could I get you to step out and go have a or go stand in front of your vehicle while I conduct my search? Now, on this consent search, we know that the consent granted has to be knowing, it has to be voluntary, and they have to have the authority to grant consent. I determined that he was the owner of the vehicle. That means he had the authority over the vehicle to give me consent, which he did. Now I'm going to go in and conduct a lawful consent search. Hello, sir. Don McRae with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, is this your vehicle? Yes. And may I ask who uh, is with you today in the vehicle? My wife. Okay. Well, hello, ma'am. How are you? Fine. Uh, other question I have is if I could have consent to search your vehicle. Sure. Okay, very good. Then if I get uh, both of Wait a minute, officer. I think I would rather you didn't. You don't want me to search? Okay, all right. Well, I will honor that then. In this situation, co-authority over the vehicle, uh, the husband said yes, the wife said no. She's the one who invoked her Fourth Amendment rights. No consent search can be conducted. Hello, folks. How are you doing today? Good. Deputy McRae with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, may I ask whose vehicle this is? My cousin's. It's your cousin's, okay. May I have consent to search this vehicle? I guess so. All right, thank you very much. Now in this scenario, the cousin gave them the authority through permission to drive their vehicle. Because of that, these people now have the authority grant consent even though the vehicle is owned by the cousin. So as soon as the cousin turned that key over to, the, to them and gave them the authority to drive it, they also gave them the authority to grant consent. Well, that's it for consent search. I hope you picked some stuff up and if you're not a law enforcement officer, I hope you picked up a few things too as far as the validity and the legalities of a consent search. Remember, please, uh, rule number one, lawful searches and seizures every time, never violate constitutional rights. If you have any questions, uh, drop me uh, an email at don at premierpolicetraining.com. I'd be uh, very happy to uh, answer your questions, provide you the case law in support of everything that you saw and heard today. And with that, we're going to move on next time to inventories. And I'll see you, I'll see you for that. And again, thank you for joining me.